Um, so think about Monet and his haystacks. Remember, he painted like the same haystacks over and over again. Oh, yes. But you can see, and he would he would go out in the field. Think about this in the 1860s. No cars, no vehicles. Takes like big canvases. We're bigger than this out there. Oil paints, wet, wet oil paints. Yeah. He'd paint, set them all up, then paint one, and then the light would change. He'd go to the next one. Light would change. That's how he did it. Yeah. Oh wow. So you look at those little studies of uh, you can go. Okay, that's a winter. You can look at it and just feel this is the feeling of the light, right? Of those haystacks. And the cathedral, he did the same thing. So, and she brought forward those ideas. He used to he had a school called Cape Cod School of Art, I think it was called, um, on, uh, in Provincetown, uh, Massachusetts, for many, many years. For, and uh, you would go there and spend the whole summer studying with him. And he started people out. First summer you had to paint with a trowel because he wanted people to just do big puzzle shapes and get the idea of the light and the shadow with just big, big puzzle shapes. Puzzle shapes. Not little. I don't even think I have a little brush. This is probably my smallest in here, but not like yeah, you know. And so, and then the next summer you can graduate down. You could eventually graduate down to this. And then a smaller panel line, and then I think after like, I don't know, five or six years, summers, he could get to it. He's using a brush occasionally. Did so, he start with the block studies also? Yes. Tell me about that. And so the block studies were, and Camille used this technique as well, so it's funny, the first time I went to her workshop, and they were all these artists going, that were finished, they had just finished a workshop, and they are like, you can't, you, got, you can only use a panel line, she gets mad if you use something up like else, and, she was fanatical about it, and the clock studies were, um, and I have some colored uh, wooden blocks painted in each of the different color, and outside, because you're getting them, capturing the outside light on a table, and a blue block, a red block, a yellow block, etc. And what does each side look like? And the the sun, the part that on the top, on the top, that gets the full white, oh, yes. the side, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and and you just do those over and over again, and then eventually you can go out and paint a little city scene of blocks of houses doing the same thing. But, yeah, but cool. blue is never blue, you know, da 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 da. So like a blue sky, you know, in certain types of day, it's not really blue; it's pinky, you know, to to convey the feeling of light. You're not painting the colors exactly as you see them, if that makes sense. And those block studies were a way to practice that. So, so when I'm kind of going here, <laughs> you're probably like, what the heck? So, um, this is what we're gonna, I'm going to work on. Um, and this, I'll um, explain why I have two of these. So, I've done them underpainting in a, acrylic. And what I've done is the complementary color of what's going to go on top. So what I'll do is I'll be laying in pretty thick and chunky paint, but there will be parts of it where I'll let that underlying complementary color peek through a bit here and there to just create the, when you have the complementary colors, they create a vibration. You know, the system. Like a little bit of an energy. So that's so what this one went. This is the reference photo. So this, this was about uh, this was about three three and a half weeks ago. We had this crazy, crazy weather day, and the clouds were just going nuts all day long. And I was tied up. We were having our art walk, and it was like four thirty. And they called my husband, "Go down quick, quick, quick!" And this was in the wash down in Palm Springs. This is the actual photo, and that's undoctored. That's what it looked like. And it was just crazy with trees and bushes and then the mountains and this, this pink, pink and purple sky, completely on the side. You know? And then there's layers of some mountains really faintly in the background. And so he got that. And then the way the, because the light was really diffused light, it was hitting this sand. It was almost lighting up that sand. You know what I mean? You can just kind of see it there. It's sort of like. So what I've done here is I've um, done a photo 
Photoshop version of that. Now I do that a lot of times if I'm in the studio as a way to abstract it for myself. It's like just that also keeps me from noodling. It, it's a way to, for me to see the bigger shapes better. And just I don't want it to be super realistic. I really like, like these blue green bushes in here because they add like a different color. Because uh, it's a really warm scene otherwise. And then that adds a little coolness, so that's that nice contrast. So the, this version took those out a bit. I'll put them, they're a little bit there, I don't know if you can see them, but I'll put them back in a little bit more as I paint it. Um, we talked about, so I, I don't do like a very detailed drawing, especially when you're doing a landscape. It, you know, I'm just getting kind of the big shapes in there. And, and now I'll start, I've laid my paints out. Uh, I'll start painting, and I already warned everybody, I get a little physical when I'm painting. Ready for the time lapse? Yeah. I end up shaking. You said you have complementary colors. Yes. I can see the, the sky. Yeah. Green and green. Yeah. Can you go down with Yeah. So, yeah, so the, this red is not exactly complementary, but I knew that I wanted that because um, the, the fan is foreground. Pretty, it's like a light pinky beige. So I didn't, I just decided I wanted to make sure that was warm. So I had this warm red that'll peek through. So I want to make sure that that foreground comes forward to you. So it'll peek through a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then these pink bushes, because they're all green, so those pink bushes. The orange, um, I don't really have a good reason on that, but. I mean, they're, they're purpley mountains, which normally it would be. Well, yeah, yeah. So I've got a uh, white, of course, and then I have a cadmium yellow. Um, usually I have a yellow, uh, a lighter yellow as well, but I'll just add a little white to that to make that orange, cadmium orange, cadmium red, magenta, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, black, and right. then. We ready? Okay. I usually start at the top. So we're going to do that and mix up some. Uh, this, this sky color is just nuts. So in the action photo, and it's here too, you see it's real peachy pink down here, and then it's more of a, a little more purple in it towards the top. So.
Mother Nature. So there's a little wider version of that. So what you'll see when I'm doing these bushes, they're not like, oh, that doesn't look exactly like the bushes on there. 